Hey everyone, welcome back for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing interview. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Avengers Endgame Hawkeye. Now this is the deluxe version of Hawkeye from Hot Toys, which means it's chocked full of goodies, including the Ronin outfit you see on the front of the box, or that you see Clint Barton wear in the beginning of Endgame. Now there is a standard version of this figure if you aren't really digging the Ronin outfit, but don't worry, everything that's in the standard version will also be in the deluxe, so this review will pretty much cover both versions. So let's get this one going, starting off by taking a closer look at the box itself. Now for the box art, again, this layout is exactly like all the other in-game figures. A large image of Ronin Hawkeye taking up most of the box, and it's blended in with the Avengers logo. I do really like the color scheme, though. The black and gold looks really nice. Now, the only difference between this box and the standard box is going to be the actual image. Uh, on the standard, you have Clint Barton's Hawkeye, whereas this is the Ronin Hawkeye. Uh, but other than that, everything else is the same. Uh, top, bottom, sides, they all have just more wording on it. Of course, you do have your Hawkeye symbol and the Avenger symbol on the sides. And then the back is going to have all of your legal information. Now, if we slide off the outer cover it's going to reveal Hawkeye in his clamshell and you'll notice already that there are a ton of accessories included in this box so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything out laid onto the table so we can take a closer look so just like I said there are a ton of accessories that are included with this figure now the ones on the left and even the center those items are included with the standard version whereas the ones on the right the outfit and sword those come with the deluxe so either way, you know, if you're going to decide to go with the standard version, you're still going to get a ton of accessories. But if you want to go the deluxe route, you get a few more items with the outfit. So we'll just make our way through each accessory individually, starting off with the base. And you can see that Hot Toys provided a hexagonal base, just like all of the other in-game bases. You have Hawkeye's symbol in the middle and then the Avengers A logo. And you can also see Hawkeye's name on the front. Now, they did add a Ronin nameplate, a little sticker that you can stick onto it. I almost missed this. It was in the instruction packet, manual packet. Uh, when I pulled that out, this popped out. So that's pretty cool. Um, glad I didn't miss it. And I guess if you decide you wanted to, you know, display Ronin, you could always pop that on there. And then, of course, you're going to have your crotch grabber that you can pop in here. But that is it for this space. Next, we have Hawkeye's compound bow, and it's a pretty simple design. You can see it's all black. You have a couple little adjustment knobs and an elastic band. Uh, pretty cool. It's very flexible. I'm not going to really pull on this too much. I I'm interested to see how this is going to hold up uh, in the long run. But overall, nice little simple bow. Moving on, we have 10 arrows. You can see there are four long ones and six short ones. Now, I believe the intended purposes of each, the short ones are supposed to just sit into the quiver, whereas the long ones are used for the different poses that you can do. You'll see that all of them have a flat edge where you can place the different arrow heads onto, just like that. A black shaft and then some silver fletching at the end. Uh, I think you could probably pose with both of them if you wanted to, but I think that's what they were going for is having the shorter ones just sit into the quiver, which you'll see in just a little bit. So it just seems fitting to move on to the arrowhead since we just looked at the arrows, and there are quite a few of them. Now, I'm not exactly sure what each specific one is, but you can see there is like a grappling hook one, armor piercing. Uh, there even looks to be like maybe a tracking missile arrowhead, which is pretty cool. And all of these are going to be able to fit onto the arrows, so you have a pretty good variety of arrowheads and I'm pretty happy about that. Next let's take a look at the shuriken or ninja stars. They look really cool. I think though that these smaller ones are just a folded up or collapsed version of the uh, larger three-pronged one and I think these come with the standard version though uh, I think they're gonna work better with the, with the Ronin outfit. Either way really nice added accessory. Next we have this switchblade or small knife, and there is the collapsed version and the displayed version. Now this can actually be uh, slotted into a sheath that is located on the figure's lower leg, which is pretty cool. Overall, a nice little small knife that you can use in your poses. Nothing to complain about. So here we have the quiver, and I really like the way this looks. It's very futuristic. 
And obviously the black and gold color scheme fits with the figure. And you can see at the bottom, there are these arrowhead pieces. Now these are actually attached to this specific piece. You can't remove them and add them to the, the arrows, uh, which is okay. I mean, obviously this is just going to fit on his back and it just looks cooler with those pieces down there. Now with the arrows themselves, like I said, you can just slot them into this section. Uh, unfortunately, they aren't secured in there. They're very loose. So if you're posing your figure, you might want to be wary of that because you know, if you have them at an odd angle, they'll just slip right out. So just something to be aware of. Otherwise, pretty cool piece. Now let's take a look at these hands. Now these hands are the last of the accessories for the standard version. Moving forward, everything else will be for the deluxe version. Now Hot Toys provided three sets of sculpted hands. One set that's already attached to the figure is a set of closed fists. Then you have a opened hand for the bow and then a uh, gripping hand for the arrow, and then two relaxed hands, bow hand, arrow hand. And I really like what they did here. I like the uh, black finger guards for the arrow hand, and then you also have that little time device. Uh, and the sculpt and painting is pretty good. You can see some texture there. Overall, the hands are pretty well done. For the deluxe version, you do have three sets of sculpted hands, a pair of closed fists, a pair of slightly open hands for holding items, and then a set of outstretched hands. And you can see by looking at the inside, there is some nice texture in there. Definitely looks like a glove. I really like these, they look really good. Now, there is a difference between the deluxe and the standard version. You can see there is this circular pattern versus this like square rectangle. And that's because there are some arm guards for the Ronin outfit and that just fits real well. Kind of looks like, uh, you know, some samurai armor or a knight armor. I really like it, it looks pretty cool. So next we have the sword, and first taking a look at this, it looks really cool. I like the design of it, the open slots that run all the way down the blade. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking sword. You also have the sheath with the sword. Now, here is an interesting thing. You, you look at this and you think, okay, here's the handle, here's where the blade goes, and that's, you know, consistent with every single sword and sheath you've seen in any movie. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if this was a design from Marvel in the movie. I can't remember. Or if this is just a goof on Hot Toys. But you actually have to sheath it through the bottom. So the opposite way. Just like that. And that looks so goofy. I can tell you I will not be posing my Hawkeye with the sword sheath like this. It just, it just looks too weird. Now this little piece is actually uh, for the sheath. You can attach this to the back of Hawkeye and then just slide this right down like that. That way you have uh, his sword on his back. Here we have the Ronin sleeveless jacket with the hoodie. It is a nice soft, I think nylon material. There is a functional zipper and then a belt that will secure it all in place. And of course it's got the black and gold color scheme that you've seen throughout the rest of the items so pretty cool nice lightweight uh, looks pretty good so last but not least here is the ronin head sculpt and i do really like this i like the proportions it looks really good i like the sculpt of the actual mask now for the likeness to jeremy renner i I don't really see it in the eye. Some people do. Uh, I don't, which it's not really a big deal. I mean, most of his face is covered by the mask, so you're probably going to have the hood up. I mean, if you're going the Ronin route, uh, that's not the biggest worry with the likeness. But, I mean, it, it still works. And a quick mention, they did throw in a couple of uh, wrist pegs and then these little uh, pieces that I think can attach to the a Ronin jacket in case one of them falls off. So here we have him, Legolas 2.0, Mr. Family Man himself, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. Now this is the standard outfit for Hawkeye. And what I wanna do is just get a closer look at the head sculpt and the outfit, starting off with the head. Now we already saw what the Ronin masked version looked like. So now let's take a look at the unmasked Jeremy Renner edition. Now this head sculpt is an interesting one. It's 
kind of on the same level as the Iron Man head sculpt, the Iron Man Endgame one. Uh, it's controversial. I mean, you can definitely see the likeness there, but it's just missing something. It's not totally Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. I mean, we've had the Captain America, the Thor, Black Widow, all of those head sculpts were pretty on point, uh, but not so much with this one. I mean, at certain angles, you can definitely see uh, the actor, but just overall, I think it kind of missed the mark. But I mean, in terms of the sculpt, the uh, painting and texture, it, it does look good in that regards. Uh, I think it will look well, especially from a distance. If you're, you know, got it on display, you're going to obviously be able to tell that it's a Hawkeye and that it's the Jeremy Renner's edition. And if you have any of the, you know, previous Hawkeyes or any of the probably upcoming Hawkeyes, you'll be able to, you know, switch out the head sculpt for one that looks a little bit better. But overall, it gets the job done. Now, when it comes to the outfit, the only difference between the standard and the deluxe is the Ronin jacket, arm guards, and gloves that you've already seen. Otherwise, the rest of the outfit is the same. For the standard outfit, it looks like they possibly use some sort of nylon canvas mixture for the material, at least on the outer parts of the sleeves, and then a softer, stretchier fabric on the underside, which I think will help with mobility. Now, the sleeveless jacket itself is a mixture of different materials, and you can see they added a good amount of detail to it. The zipper on the front doesn't actually work, though, but they did sneak in a side zipper on the right side, which is covered up by his arm. Now, the sash around his chest will hold his quiver or sword on his back, it can also be removed if you choose to. And lastly, a couple details on his upper half are on his left and right forearms. For the right, you can see he is sporting a mini crossbow with some small bolts. And on the left, he has three small bands that wrap around his arm. They can be moved up and down to whatever position you prefer. Moving down to the pants, it's the same material that we just saw on top. Really what's notable about the lower half uh, is the knee and shin slash boot guards. Now the knee guards are connected with the pants instead of being their own separate piece, which could cause some issues if you're doing some dynamic posing. The boots are also a split cut design, which is a good thing. And you can see on the back of the right boot, there's a sheath for the small knife, which we saw earlier. Also the bottom or sole of the boots have a nice sculpted tread and even a small amount of brown paint added to it. The detail on the outfit is very well done. And I think the material chosen was superb. Now let's get into articulation, starting off with the head. Now the head is on a fixed neck, which sits on a ball joint, so you still get a good amount of movement forward, a little side to side, and some 360 rotation. For the arms, you're going to get about an extension of 90 degrees. There's also a butterfly joint in the shoulder, a swivel at the upper bicep, a 90 degree bend at the elbow, and then your regular ball joint for your wrist and hands. Now for the torso, you get a good amount of ab crunch, a little side to side, and surprisingly, a good amount of rotation. For the legs, you get a 90 degree extension from the side and to the front. There's a swivel at the upper thigh and a double bend at the knee. And you can hear that's on a ratchet. And then you have a split boot cut design. And there's some movement in the foot, but this is a really stiff foot, so uh, the movement isn't as great as I would like it to be. Uh, you might have a better mobility with your uh, feet, but mine's a little stiff. But that wraps up articulation, so I'm going to throw them into a bunch of different poses and just give my final thoughts on this figure. So what do I like and dislike about the deluxe version of in-game Hawkeye? Starting off with some of the negatives, I didn't like the way the arrows sit into the quiver. It's a little frustrating, and you can basically forget about any poses where he might be shooting his bow from a falling angle, or he would be upside down, unless you find a way to rig up the arrow so that they're stuck inside. I also had a hard time getting the bow and arrow to cooperate with me during the pose session. It just seemed a little off. I couldn't get the arrow to sit right, uh, or when I was pulling back on the string, it was just in an awkward position. It was just kind of a struggle, which was a little frustrating. Also, I noticed that with the hood for the Ronin outfit, when you would uh, put that over the head, there was a little bit of space between the back of it that looked a little awkward. I guess I understand you need that extra room to get it over the head sculpt, but I wish there would have been a way to tighten that up. Ideally, you would want to purchase two Hawkeyes and just have one in the standard outfit and one in the Ronin. 
Uh, in a perfect world, everyone would be able to just afford multiple figures so that they could display both outfits. But I, I know the average collector is already too far in debt to afford two of the same figures. So as much as it's a pain to switch out the outfits, it's probably the better option. Now, I can't really include this into the negatives because some people like it, but I do think the head sculpt could have been a little bit better. The likeness is there, but it is a struggle to see it sometimes. Now, there's a lot to like about this figure. First off, the amount of accessories included with this guy is insane. You pretty much have unlimited posing options. I also love the detail they put into the outfit and each included item. It's stunning to see the figure posed up. It's very accurate to the film as well. Ultimately, this is a must-have figure, and I would say that picking up the deluxe version is definitely worth it solely because of how sick the Ronin outfit looks. But either way, I know that the standard Hawkeye is going to look great with the rest of your in-game lineup. But that's going to be all, folks. Thank you guys for joining in for another unboxing. Stay tuned for more videos coming in the future. And like always, thanks for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.